And then just even though your voice is like, you're not wrong. And like, oh my gosh, it just like lifts, everything lifts. Yeah, I need a bag, bro. Send it too quickly. I'm making his dog. Like I'm in a big lease. Yeah, I told him I'm hit it out of stands. I deserve another hundred bands. I deserve another hundred fans. Welcome to another episode of the Married Game Podcast. We are the voice you trust when it comes to lust, and we are who you hire when she lacks desire. And this is the episode we have been waiting for seven years to do. We have in the house someone very special and his very special wife. Today we have the wizard, who we call the wizard. His name is Stephen Callis and his beloved wife, Marianne. Welcome to the show, guys. It's great to be here. We are, Jesse, how pumped are you? We're so pumped. It's a very free flow show. So, um, you know, if you feel like you want to interrupt or jump in or say something or correct us, that's how we work here. But uh, it is such an honor to have you guys here. And we are, we talk about you on this podcast a lot. So people have heard The Wizard. Uh, Anybody who has somebody that they work with other than us, they talk about their wizard. Mm -hmm. So the, the wizardry has been flowing through the vibes and the wires a lot and so it's such an honor to have you here we have said time and time again we don't think we would be together if it wasn't for you totally and the hundreds of marriages that we've been able to help and the thousands that listen to this uh, are influenced radically because of you and your guys's love affair so when it comes What's down when, what's going on oh with God. this love That's affair we start off our calls so this is that's how sessions start with me. Yeah, I yeah. often ask that question. Yeah, yeah. Really? What's going on okay. in this love affair? So what's going affair? on? Don't give away all the secrets. Okay. Right? What's secrets going on with no this secrets. love affair? Uh, it's an honor to have you here. What's what's your first blush? First, wait, I want to say oh, one thing. I there. want you, if if we get to it or how it comes up, to be so honest about us or our enneagrams or what we deal with because we literally go here and talk about it. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I just just feel free to just say whatever you want. I'm pretty sure everyone wants to know like the dirty, dirty stuff about it. Yeah. So go ahead. Yeah. Well, I have pictures. Here. Yeah. <laughs> the nudes that we. Yeah. Yes. Oh my God! Here we go. We pose it. Yeah. <laughs> and cue stripper oh. song. Yeah. yeah. No. So. Uh, Leopard. Let's go. Welcome. It's an honor to have you here. Uh, we do our session. We've been working with you for over seven years now, and we we're meet pretty with, religious about it. We now. meet with you every single week. Mm-hmm. Good, bad, ugly, or indifferent, and um, I well, love the ones where we're good because we're growing instead of just like hashing out. Some, I think how the, angry. I think the bad ones were growing just as Obviously, much. Obviously, but, that's but my I like the good ones because I feel like we're not just treading water; we're like growing together. I love it. Yeah. I love it. So welcome. Thank you for Coach. having me. It's been a long time. We've talked about this for a long time. A long yeah. time. What uh, What is your first take? Being here, being here, what, 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 what's on your heart? How what's awful going on? is he really? What do you really <laughs> want to <laughs> say? No, I'm just what kidding. I'm just kidding. About that. What are you, What are you going to say, Coach? <laughs> Uh, speaking of personality, uh, they've probably uh, told you, the listener, that I work with an ancient model called the Enneagram. That's uh, it actually came to the Western world uh, by the way of the Sufis, who ran into the Jesuits, and then you get the Enneagram. That's the shortest version of that story. Um, but the Enneagram examines these energies that we're born with. Um, and that you are welcome to ignore all your life and trip over them, or you're welcome to wake up and pay attention to them and learn to move through them in uh, effective ways. So I said all that to say that my my personality by its nature um, sits back. um, um, uh, What do they say about my type? Uh, We uh, reveal ourselves to the world in a way that allows us to remain hidden. Mm. And um, as you were introducing us, I was thinking, yeah, it's what I do. I meet with individuals or couples 50 minutes at a time, day by day, hour by hour, and then they go out in the world, and sometimes really good stuff happens. So I was just kind of noticing the way I sort of reveal myself through this love affair, you know, Jesse and Keith, and yet can still sort of sit back here and remain hidden until today. Hello, everybody. Yeah. Hello, everybody. We're so glad to introduce you to our world. Yeah. People that listen into us, and um, when you introduced when you when you introduced us to the Enneagram, I remember 
finding out I'm a seven and finding out she's a six, yep. I was literally reading to her, this is how they interact. Because oh, it yeah. says, here's how, and, and I and I read it and she goes, you're so full of shit. You made that <laughs> Yeah, up. I literally said that. You're like, you're, like, you're totally you're making, making like, this you just, I'm like, read it. <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> and, it like, and, and I read it. I was like, wow. So Blown have away. have you found that that is a, a backbone that has worked almost a hundred percent of the time with the people that you meet with? So so I'm going to answer a question on the way to your question. Cool. Uh, after after doing couples work for a long time, um, things really do tend to fall into three basic categories, uh, in no particular order. Um, family of origin like the health or unhealth of childhood and how that sort of lingers in me, positively or negatively, and how then that that uh, is kind of flush to the surface in the love affair that is a marriage. Mm -hmm. And so the next thing you know, you're, you're talking or yelling at your wife, and you don't even know you're talking or yelling at your mother. You don't even know. It feels like you're talking to your wife, but mm -hmm. later on you're gonna go, wait a minute or your father uh, or or whatever right yeah. so that's category number one um category number two has to do with um uh, basic psychological maturity um our willingness to grow up and the chief way that we measure a willingness to grow up is uh that we can put off immediate gratification in hopes of some greater good mm. that we cannot be so reactive it is the third category that you're asking me about mm. And that is how we negotiate differences. Mm. Um, so personal opinion, you know, you've seen the TV commercial. We match you on the 38 uh, researched matching, the, the eHarmony commercial. Yeah, God yeah. bless that man. Um, it turns out that it is not what I have in common with you that compels me. I mean, it's nice to have some things in common. You hope you have a couple of things in common. Yeah. But that night we met, or you met, or that morning you met, or wherever you met, um, what made you ask for that phone number was the mystery of differences. Mm. Yes. What, and you didn't know that, by the way. This is mostly an unconscious mm -hmm. process. But something in you in that moment was like, that is so not me. Mm -hmm. That is so not me. What is that? Mm -hmm. What is that that is so not me? That's what's hot. That's what makes you want to have sex. That's what makes you want to call again. That's you want to examine this thing that's not you. Now here's where it gets kind of, well, you got to laugh or cry. So I'm going to say it gets funny. Oh no. Within as early as two years and no later than five, men and women will find themselves all kinds of righteous mad. Like they think they have a right to be mad. And what they're mad about is the very thing that made them fall in love in the first place. Mm. Mm -hmm. So you get this guy who, as he's fallen in love and getting ready to be married, says to his friends, she's an organizational wizard. You should see it. She, she is the can-do girl, the queen of the house, a place for everything, everything in its place. Plan your work. I mean, it's the most amazing thing, you know. And then two to five years later, they're in therapy, and he's saying, <laughs> she's a controlling bitch. Yeah, <laughs> right? Literally us. And, us. And, so, yeah. and so here's this woman. I finally met a man who can talk about his feelings. I find he writes me songs. He plants flowers. He's emotionally intelligent. You should see this guy's very sensitive to me. And two to five years later, he, he cries too often. He's not manly enough, and he's a big pussy. <laughs> yeah. And and you, and and you want to just as a as a therapist, you just want to say to those couples, you cannot have it both ways. Oh my God. You yeah. have got to remember. We, we, yeah. We've heard that from you. That that what you fell in love with is this thing you're complaining. Yeah. Yeah. now so shut up yeah. Yeah. she hasn't changed he hasn't changed yeah your view of him or her has changed mm. and that's where the Enneagram comes in uh -huh. it helps us put into words the energy of seven will always be this energy and the energy of six will always and four and three will always be this energy and you might as well argue about the color of your mate's eyes Mm. You, you might as well say, you know, where'd you get those blue eyes or brown eyes? And I wish they were different because they ain't going to be different. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Wow. Okay. So that makes so much sense. Now, there's a concept that, first of all, I think one of the greatest things I learned from you, and I want to ask Marianne if, if this is how you are in your marriage. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, when, when I think of you, I think there's a man that's got deep curiosity and holds space for the curious. 
And it's caused me to be radically curious with my friends and with Jesse and and that. Is he as curious with you as he is with us? Because he holds a very curious space that makes people want to like start to share. Is he that way with you? Maybe not all the time. Or how does that how does that come up in your guys's the, sh- love the short answer is, dear God, yes, day and night, twenty four seven three sixty five. There is, um, but um, I don't want to say that and make it sound like you know he's this little dog running around behind me and nipping at my heels because that's not true. Yeah. Um, given the way both of us are wired. Uh, even though his energy is one which sits back and mine is one which pushes forward, the, the paradox of us is that he is the one who has to come after me and pull me out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because I spend a lot of my time, you know, just being this, that, or the other, and everything is always presented perfectly. And sometimes inside, there's a tsunami raging, but I will never let you know. He mm-hmm. has to actually come find it. But this curiosity, I think um, a, a huge component of it is not only wanting to know about me, but it's also a desire for him to know himself. Mm. So whatever question he asks me about myself is one I think that he wants to ask about himself or one he wishes I would ask him about himself. Ooh. Sorry for all the pronouns. No, that's so beautiful. Yeah. Does that make sense? It's so true. I love that when we are on you our calls, that you coach. say you're a four. <laughs> And how you're so emotional. And even on our calls, when you talk about her, I love that about you guys. It's yeah. so beautiful. It really is. Mm-hmm. You feel seen and heard right now? Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> right? You saw it, didn't you? Yeah. Because yeah. like, I'm like, oh, she's nailing it. Because I'm, like, I'm like, I don't ask you anything I don't ask of myself. Yeah. And you, and and if you can hold on to that, I know yeah. I'm a handful. Yeah. But, but I don't, I'm not expecting, demanding, or asking anything from you that I don't want to give yeah sure. yeah um, and so that she sees that is pretty special yeah that's 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 well that's so done the second thing oh, go ahead. well in our coaching call yesterday you were t- saying something to to be inquisitive or be curious and all those things and um or, or not be wrecked i don't know i forget what it was but i was like just so you know he's not perfect at that either so that's what i wanted to know too because it's so easy to see someone else's flaws and that's what us coaches are here for. Here's, here's a way I'm not perfect about what you're noticing. Yeah. I, that I know that I'm not perfect. She can add to the list probably. <laughs> um, uh, when I'm working, people don't pay me to be judged or cajoled or pushed around. They, 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 they pay me to be curious. Yeah. So there's a sense in which, you know, part of what you're getting is what I owe you. I want, I want to be curious and I want you to be curious about about what you're doing, right? Mm. Um, with with Marianne, I am curious, and then sometimes I cross a line, and I can feel myself. Um, there's a slight sled, a sl- thread of desperation in it that comes out as is pretty demanding. Mm. Like no, 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 we are not going to fall asleep at the wheel, right? I don't say it that way, but the mm. energy feels like sure. that to me. Like no, 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 no. Like how mm. are you? Fine. No, you're not, you're, you're not, after all these years, you know you're lying to me. You know I know you're lying to me. Yeah. Why, you know, why are we going to do the fine thing again? Yeah. Yeah. You know, because yeah. you know where this ends. You're sooner or later going to tell me what's wrong, right? Mm. Um, so, so sometimes I have to watch this weird, it's a desperation. It's like a, a, like a panic. Maybe that's even a better word. That's, that's like, oh, no, 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 we don't quit. Mm. We're never going to. Say you're never gonna say fine, and I'm gonna go. Well, good. I'm glad you're fine. Yeah. Let's get a sandwich. You know, yeah. I, I don't want that, man. <laughs> yeah. So a concept that I believe that you have uh, helped us understand, and something that we've really embraced, and then you've you've kind of you've kind Ooh. of codified it. It's this concept of the radical we. Hmm. Will you kind of dig in and maybe explain a little bit about that because we love that. So, um, oh, uh, this is a little uh, bit of hyperbole, but it just feels like half of the problems and conflicts that married couples have could be uh, greatly ameliorated or, or erased 
if we would again wake up every day answering the question, what is marriage? What is marriage? And the reason I think that's important is because if you listen to married people talk as often as I do, stuff comes out of their mouth that tells you they've, they've, they've stopped addressing that question. Mm. Like, here's my favorite example. Um, I can't even do it with a straight face. <clears throat> <laughs> you should love me just the way I am. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, you know, if you're married, you don't get to say that anymore. <laughs> you don't? Yeah. And I don't even know why you would think you could say it, right? right? Because there are parts of me that are unlovely, and no one who loves me should tolerate them. Mm. And so for me to, to posture myself as having the right... You know, that's it. That's it. You know, what you see is what you get. And you should love me just the way I am is somebody that has forgotten what marriage is, right? Mm -hmm. Because because this person I am, lovely, unlovely, right? She's she's interdependent and on some days dependent on that person. And so I can't start talking like it's just about me, right? Um, so a long time ago, I just I just fell on this phrase, the, the radical we. Marriage is that day that you take your I and forever subordinate it, tuck it just under this thing called we. Mm. Now, you still have an I. You couldn't survive in the we if I didn't have a self and you didn't have a self. Mm -hmm. But it is subordinated. Um, uh, young people, young men. Uh, married a couple of years often in my office. Well, you don't have to tell her where I'm going and what I'm doing and when I'm coming back. And every time I always go, I don't know, because you're married? I say, I say it just yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, because we are accountable. We're in a we, right? So we're accountable for our comings and goings. Mm -hmm. mm. We're account I don't call her every time I drop into 7-Eleven for an ice cream bar. but, but in Wait, you do? I <laughs> I don't even do you that anymore. Ask if I want an ice cream. Well, you don't in share. Fashion hour. <laughs> yeah. But in the scheme of things, I know where she is, mm. right? And what she's doing, and right. I have a sense of who she's with, and she knows where I am and what I'm doing, and she has a sense of whom I'm with. Mm. Um, if I say uh, an old uh, high school <laughs> girlfriend that I haven't heard from in 30 years is in town and wants to drop by my office for the first time in 30 years and say hi to me, now if I say that two weeks ahead of time. That's great, right? But if two weeks after that girl's done that, I say, oh, uh, I don't know if I ever told you about Carla, but she was there two weeks ago. That's not going to be a crisis, but we're going to talk. Yeah. Like that was information. Okay, back to your question. These are examples of people who sort of woken up and forgotten what marriage is. And marriage is the radical we. And I'd love to sum it up in this one sentence. On the day you get married... From that day forward, strictly speaking, there's no such thing as your own damn business. Mm. There is no such thing as your own damn business. You might even have separate activities. If you like bowling and she hates it, great, go bowl once a week and she catches up on Netflix or does whatever she's going to do. Right? But how you behave at that bowling alley is not your own damn business because it will add or subtract when you come home to the marriage. Mm. The radical we is my way of saying... From this day forward, my identity is in we. And I have this I that tags along, but my identity is in we. Mm. That was amazing. So true. So true. I I want you to talk about his Enneagram and then mine. What's him and his like amazingness and then him and his not amazingness. And then do me next. <laughs> so sevens are the last of the three head types. There are head types, heart types, and gut types in the Enneagram. And we call seven the enthusiast. And um, I'm a word geek, so some of your listeners might or might not know that thusos in Greek means God. And the word enthused literally means to be filled with God. And when you meet a seven, you feel it, don't you? It's, it's, um, it's an energetic thing. Um, it, it pushes out into the world. It pushes out at you. Uh, there's an ongoing sense in sevens of, uh, don't you all see all the fun things we could do today? There's, a, there's almost a, 
I love this uh, so much. <laughs> it's so awesome. There's almost a childlike, I did not say childish, that's, that's a separate issue if that happens, but there's almost a childlike sense of, it could be Christmas today again. You know, yeah. we could open presents again, again today, today, and there might be something under the yeah. tree again today that I didn't know was there yesterday. I love when you say, I don't want one, I want them yeah, all, exactly. give me them all. That's exactly. how you explain him. Exactly, one of those potato chips tasted pretty good. Here we Eat go. Whole bag, let's go. <laughs> exactly. And exactly so, him. And so sevens <clears throat> uh, bring us this sense of the holy now. They're very much in the moment. Um, and they don't understand the, the rest of the types don't get that. They don't, they're like, uh, come on. There's a sense in them of come on, everybody. Mm -hmm. Today's the day to eat too much or drink too much or sleep too long or make love forever or, or, or try a new thing or reach into the world. I've never bungee jumped before. Let's do that. Or whatever it is they want to do. Yeah. Um, if you're having a party, invite a seven, because if everything else goes wrong, the seven will like invent a game with couch cushions <laughs> yes. and have everybody sort of laughing and, and rolling exactly. along. Yes. Um, yes. The party captain. Yeah, absolutely. Oh Sevens gosh. bring a lot of beautiful things into the world. Now, if they would like to be deaf, dumb, and blind to themselves for the rest of their life, um, they're not going to do what I'm going to talk about next. But the sevens that are willing to do the inner work learn two things in this order. They learn that part of the reason that they have pushed so mightily out into the world is because they're really beautiful and that's a beautiful thing to do. But paradoxically, they learn that they also have pushed out into the world because they're in a foot race with suffering. Hmm. Head, heart, gut. The center that sevens neglect is the heart center. Now, I'm not saying they don't have hearts. They have hearts. They have very sensitive hearts. But they don't want to spend a lot of time here because it is impossible to love anything or anyone and not suffer. Mm -hmm. And sevens hate that. Like, that's a cosmic law that they're like, maybe it's possible. Maybe there's a way. Yeah. You know, I'll if I... figure I'm, it out. If I... In fact, sevens are kind of like, if I'm smart enough, I won't have to suffer. If I'm good enough, I won't have to suffer. If I'm enthusiastic and optimistic sounding enough, I won't have to suffer. Yep. Um, and, and spiritually, that's all crap, right? Because, yep. because love is suffering, say the Buddhists. Uh, pick up your cross and follow me, say the Christians. If you look at major world religions, the one thing they all sort of point at is life is hard. And it's especially hard when you fall in love because the moment you're in love, you're naked and your heart's out there. Uh, as I tell everybody, you know, what's the reward for having the greatest marriage on earth? One of you gets to weep over a grave. Oof. Now, that means don't get married unless you think it's the highest honor to have that chance. Hmm. And the argument I would make that it is an honor is the alternative is lying in hospice, looking at your watch and saying, yay, I win, I never had to weep over a grave. Hmm. Now, if I'm your hospice chaplain and I hear you say that, I'm sorry, I'm leaning over the bed and saying, you didn't win anything, moron. Yeah. You missed the whole thing. What do you mean you, yeah. what do you mean you won, right? Okay. Sevens, that's, what I'm talking about is true for all humanity, but sevens are the last to this party and they resist it the most. But when they do their inner work and realize that an important question to ask themselves twice a month is, what have I lost? Because that's where wisdom comes from. Mm. That was and, some homework. And, and, and when, when sevens do that work, they become wise old elders, wise neighbors, you know, wise uh, people. Um, sixes. <gasps> Here we go. The, the, second, the second of the three head types. Mm -hmm. um, we also call the head center the fear center, uh, but I'm telling you six is right in the center of that. Uh, all human beings can be afraid, but um, sixes are afraid. And the first way you'll sort of realize that is by how often uh, they are looking for worst case scenarios mm -hmm. and the possibility of bad outcomes. Little things, big things, medium things. 
Oh no, we might not have enough milk in the fridge for cereal tomorrow. Like a little thing. Did I remember to have enough milk for cereal? Okay, is there enough money in the bank? Uh, we're gonna go to the beach. A shark will probably bite me in half. <laughs> I wonder when was the last time this plane crashed. I, I, uh, they'll look out into the world circumstantially and always are calculating the possibility of something going wrong. Mm -hmm. The deeper fear of six is the fear of getting into trouble mm -hmm. um, because they're also convinced that when things do go wrong, it's probably going to be their fault. Mm -hmm. And it will either be their fault because they've actually, they're at fault, but even more so because they should have known this might happen. Yes. And if they could have known, then they would have been able to mm -hmm. make it stop happening, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and the deeper fear of the three, the deepest, uh, we call the fear of being. There is something very deep inside of six that wonders if it's all right to have been born. That's interesting. If it's all right to, to be in the world. Now, the genius of six takes your breath away, especially when you're a four, because it's, it's stuff that I have to work at and aspire to. Um, the Hebrew Bible, the Christians call it the Old Testament, uh, God is, uh, the, the word in Hebrew, hesed, is translated steadfast, his steadfast love. Sixes are steadfast. They endure like nobody you've ever known. When they say, I will, they do or die trying. Mm -hmm. Uh, in fact, a problem for sixes is, is when they say yes to something and then there's obvious data that they should not have ever said yes. And you have to kind of drag them away from that sometimes and say, that was not something to say yes to. You know, yeah. it's okay to say I was wrong and you could stop now, right? Mm -hmm. um, loyalty um, is a huge, huge deal for sixes. Um, my grandmother was a six, and she was from England, and there was an old English saying that she said a lot, and it was very six, and it goes, plan your work and work your plan. Plan your work and work your plan. That's what sixes do. That's sixes, are, if you're a six, uh, if you see them at the end of the day and say, did you have fun today? They really won't know what you're asking them. That's a seven question. Did you have fun today, Keith? Yeah. He knows what I'm asking, yeah. right? Yeah, right, we did. But, but a seven would rather answer questions like, did you have a productive day today, Jesse? Six. I'm sorry, six. a six would yeah. rather say, did you have a, pr and six, productive. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, here's what all I accomplished. And, and then they would you probably want to. Well, you asked me, did you have fun? I'm like, yeah, I had fun. Are you like, we well, don't believe what I did. Yeah, can you believe I did this? I did that. That's exactly what yeah. happened just like yesterday. <laughs> I love that. So, so um, when a six says, I'm your friend, you have to scrape them off the bottom of your shoe to get rid of them because they will be your friend. <laughs> it's an analogy. <laughs> uh. <laughs> well, it's so interesting. I, can I interrupt yeah, for sure. just half a second? My seven enthusiasm and on stage and gusto for life is what attracted you to me. 100%. And then you show up every time and actually our first date you drove like an hour in the hail, hail. to 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 be there and i was like that's so damn attractive mm -hmm. because people don't do what they say they're gonna do it's very rare mm -hmm. and you're like well, i feel like i helped you do that in life well yeah yeah mm -hmm. but but that was super attractive to me like wow this mm -hmm. there's such steadfastness that's that's so true sevens and sixes seem magnetically attracted to each other on an unconscious level because sixes do provide sevens um, uh, some lessons in constancy, mm. uh, mm -hmm. lessons in uh, lessons in follow through, a uh, kind of a, a grounding anchor. Uh, uh, if a, a six would have to say to a seven a lot, "Hey, that does sound fun," and then kind of behind the seven's back, go look on the computer and see that it's too expensive yeah. or seven people Just died reality. doing that yeah. last year yeah. you know and yeah. they might yeah. come back and say no it does sound fun but i'd like us not to die and i anyway they're just kind of the <laughs> yeah but wait a minute is the mm. message from six to seven yeah. now let's take it the other way um I, I mean sixes that are kind of average to low functioning and kind of stuck right are uh, really stuck and they're kind of paralyzed 
and they don't try anything new, mm -hmm. and they can just become kind of angry, dull, and boring people, right? So here comes seven energy that's like, oh, come on. We could bungee jump or whatever it yeah. is. Yeah. Come, come on. That's yeah. so the energy. Let's fly to it? Boston after we've known each yeah. other a week. Like, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's so <laughs> mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. No, that's good stuff. Go ahead. Do you have any questions for them two together? I want to know how long you guys been together and what are some biggest struggles you guys deal with? Fair enough. So, uh, I was single a long time after my divorce. You said 18 um, years? 18 years. And um, we met in 2005, and we were collegial friends for five years. And you've got to believe me, we never so much as flirted or said anything solicitous to one another. Was there just none of that vibe in your heart? It was years heart? before I saw you. Yeah, well, we met... Between 2005 and... and 17 is when I... Was that yeah, the year? 17. Yeah, yeah. Couples do that. yeah, that's right. Yeah. It was 17. Um, and I, I don't know if there was or there wasn't. I was dating somebody. She was married. And so I don't, you know, I, yeah. I, I maybe I don't do it all that consciously, but I know how to kind of contain whatever those are. I mean, I always knew she was beautiful, but no, yeah. there was really nothing going on. We were collegial friends because I never had her over to my house. I never went to her house. But uh we drank coffee and talked and talked and talked. So much coffee. <laughs> so much talking. So <laughs> much coffee, so much talking. Yeah, so how long have we been together? So then uh, you started baking. Oh, do you mind? Please. There we go. Uh, so in 2017, uh, well, yeah, well, I would say 16 first was mm -hmm. a, just a really awful year. Uh, for me, it was like uh, sort of a... An amalgamation of every bad thing that could happen. Um, my mother was living in New York. That's where I'm from. Uh, she became very sick. I left my job to go be her caregiver. And while I was her caregiver, my husband, who's now my ex-husband, um, decided Tinder was a good hobby. Mm. And uh, so I came back from New York, and things just kind of super blew up. And I remember calling him and I'm like so you're a marriage and family therapist right and he's like yeah and I said so I have something to tell you and I need your advice and I'm telling him this story and you could hear like just the breathing on the other end of the phone he's like so who did this happen to or did you read about it I'm like no it happened in my house <laughs> wow. it happened in my house to me and so he very wisely said well you know here are the first five things you need to do and um, so that that was that and then um my, uh, the, in the beginning of 2017, my mother died. In the end of 2017, my divorce was final. And I thought, I can catch my breath. And within a year, I had another family member become very ill, and I became her caregiver. Overlay this with the two of us getting highly caffeinated. Um, <laughs> and then along comes COVID. And I was in, at this point in time, I was living in Las Vegas, and um, we, uh, I was trapped at home as a 24-7 caregiver in the middle of COVID, and I became a stress baker. And because we couldn't meet for coffee in coffee shops anymore because COVID, uh, we used to meet at his office, and I would bring him things. Polish I would goods. Bake. Thank God for COVID for you guys, <laughs> yes. right? So I would bring things I would bake for him. Uh, and he didn't die, but he did gain some weight. <laughs> Uh, and then, when was it in the spring Then there's of debate about which one of us flirted first. But it was you and you know it. Yeah, I think it was you. It was you. We made out in a parking lot and the rest Aww, is history. Yeah. We got married on January the 1st, 2021. I didn't mm -hmm. realize it was so recent. It was actually it was between, from our first date to the day of our wedding was six months, two weeks, and two days. When but I'm not, know, you know. yeah. I'm not yeah. counting. I'm not counting. So yeah. what do we struggle with? So many things. No, um, like every relationship. No, you go first because I want to. I want to hear what you have to say. He's, he who speaks first loses. Heck. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, he, huh. Well, I don't want to speak first and lose. We'll just say it. Say it. Just it. say it. What I can say is this: we say everything he on has, this podcast. He has. Um, he pursues me. Uh, not physically uh, that way, like, but, but he pursues me like the hounds of hell. Mm. 
And of course, being married to a marriage and family therapist, he knows every trick in the book. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can I can hide nothing. That's from what him. I wondered. Oh I yes, wondered that we we were joking about this, and um, one day we were just talking about something, and he said, "Well, you know, in good marriages," and I'm like, "No." Time out. Mm -hmm. I said, I don't want to talk about the philosophy of marriage right now. I want to talk about what's happening between us. Mm. And really, we, we did end up talking about the philosophy of marriage because that's what it is, right? Mm -hmm. marriage, is a, marriage is a crucible. And so uh, a lot of the struggles I had with him was um, him not seeing my image, but seeing who I was really. Uh, and that person was put away and hidden for a very long time mm. um, because it was protection and safety and it was the mm. way I survived a lot of really bad things. And I kind of looked at him and I was like, mind your own business. And yeah. he's like, well, actually I am. And, and so th it, it's not really a struggle as much as it is um, encountering someone who's actually interested in me. Mm. And not just in the stuff on the surface, but is really interested in my welfare and my well-being. And, and am I um, kind of climbing out of some of those uh, little prisons that we all create for ourselves? So it, not a struggle. It's not really a struggle so much as it is uh, a different way of encountering someone. Mm. Um, I would say the worst struggle I have is reminding him to empty the dishwasher. Would you say that's fair? Oh my goodness. That's the biggest struggle we have, truly. The roommate issue, not the yeah. like love issue. No, and yeah. then also there's the whole thing with the DVR, but that's for another podcast <laughs> entirely. The whole thing. You know, the whole thing. We need a whole hour to talk you about You mean erasing the things? Oh, so what, well that, okay. and also he is a huge movie buff, and <laughs> you know what I'm going to say. And so for all the years that I was a caregiver, I missed a lot of TV. Like, you know, I still thought Friends was on. Like, it was really wow. bad, right? And so Stephen will be like, did you see Blah Blah Movie? No. Oh, good. I'll DVR it. Okay, so we have this whole queue of all these movies ready to watch. So he'll say, which one do you want to see? And so I'll pick whichever one. And he's got the remote in his hand. So, of course, the credits come up and bzzz, he fast forwards. And he, so we watch the first five minutes of the movie. And he's like, okay. And then he grabs it and he speeds through the movie to these seminal scenes or these really important moments so I can watch a two and a half hour movie in 25 minutes. And you like that or dislike that? Makes me crazy. Yeah, that would ah, be very frustrating. Oh, got it. Oh, my God. <laughs> that would be very frustrating. Because oh you already know the movie. So type, so. So type four in important relationships, and obviously this is the relationship. So type four is... Um, we don't even know that we are doing it, but we're sort of always looking for a, a context in which we can say, please ask me why this is important to me. That's very true. Mm. Right? You're right. Why this scene in this movie made me cry. Why that this means something scene, to you, yeah, absolutely. obviously. Why yeah. this, this old cabin in Flagstaff that, you know, is met, or whatever. It could be a geography or a thing or a thing. Book. And so... Um, so fours are self-absorbed, and they have to kind of watch that. That's different than self-centered, but they're just very much like, I'm having a big feeling, and I wanna, I, I want the, the presumption of four. And it's not okay. I gotta, I work on it. But it's like, Marianne, stop your life right now. Pay attention to me, and notice why this matters to me. Wait, are you a four? No, but could you do that? No, but, <laughs> but, 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 but you with your cat is a four. Oh well, I've, she, oh, oh my God! You gotta look at the cat. Daughter. Look at the cat. Look at the cat. I'm like, I just looked at the cat. Oh my God! I have I no that. idea what that means, Stephen. <laughs> I'll be watching TV and she'll go look, and sometimes before I even turn around, I'll say, I'll bet it's a cat. Oh my <laughs> God! <laughs> I have more pictures of my cat in my phone than I do of him. Yeah. Says so. True story. So, by the way, sevens and fours and ones, if you look at the Enneagram symbol, are cousins. They're psychic cousins. And mm. as different as we are, mm -hmm. there's there's a real sense of... And for us, it's That's three, what six, I was going to say. You're, mm -hmm. you're three. two, three? Three, three six, nine. Nine. Okay. That is very yeah, much the same. That's why I think why you are able to articulate Jesse and why she thinks the way she does a lot because you're with a three. Mm -hmm. And also, it's you've helped, mastered it's Enneagram helped me anyway. understand. I, I want to know how you mastered it, but I didn't, I didn't want to cut you off on no, what you're I, answering. The, the stuff we work at is so, I, I, I don't think there's anything extraordinary that we struggle with. Uh, we struggle with a subject I help couples with all the time, and we're talking about it probably every six to eight weeks the benefit of the doubt. Mm 
Mm. Yes. I love look, that one. Look, can, can you get it through your head that I make mistakes, <laughs> but I rarely look across the room at you and say in my heart, I'm going over there to disrespect you. I can't remember a time yeah. I said in my heart, I'm going to go over there to intrude, inconvenience, uh, presume upon, dis no, I just go over there and intrude and inconvenience and right. presume, but I don't even know that I am, right? And so sometimes we have to sit down again and say to each other, and for various reasons, you know, I deserve the benefit of the doubt. I don't mind that I've made a mistake, but why don't we not begin with, here's how you suck. No, that, she actually never says that, but the, there's, yeah. a, there's an energy around that. You know, sure. couldn't we begin with, if you got a minute, I'm really struggling with something in this relationship. Mm. Those are magic words. Too. Yeah, you tell yeah, us you, that a lot. Time. Oh, that was enormous. Yeah. Because now I can preface anything I have with Stephen. I'm struggling with. Now you have my full attention. Yeah. I don't feel attacked. I'm absolutely here with you, and it just tends to go a lot better. And it neutralizes a lot of the mm, what could potentially Why be would really you do that? Why? difficult yeah. interpersonal Tricism. feelings. And it just says this is the struggle right yeah. here. Whatever this is. It's taken what? us a long time to get to where we can feel safe enough to say something like that well yeah because you taught it so well when you're like if you just say hey you always do this 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 our shield and sword we're ready to fight as opposed to hey i, yeah. I would like this or when you do this it really makes me feel this way or i'm struggling with something I and mean, then you always say this this phrase where you say you know it's okay to have uh Grievances and what's the other one? Complaints. Complaints. Hey, I've got a, I'm struggling with this. I've got a complaint and a grievance. I'd like to bring it to the, you know, may I approach, approach the bar with my, 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 my troubles and grievances. You're Complaints. married to somebody who's radically imperfect. Yeah. That means we've got to have a mechanism for grievances. No, mm -hmm. you're not. Yeah, <laughs> just, just people. Just people. Just people. You're looked, not He at looked all. at me when he said <laughs> that. He didn't say no. He just yeah. meant people. He meant me. He and there's, there's got to be a process yeah. by which the beloved can come to the beloved and say, I'd like yeah. to file this grievance. I'd like to arrange a time to, to talk about this. Because I, I, I'm going to say it again. Most of the times I am behaving in a, in a, in a, less, than in a less than respectful way to Marianne, I'm the last person who knows that. Mm. And I need to hear, you know, this is not working for me. I expect more. I expect something different. And, and if I could, if I stay curious as opposed to defensive, uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, most of those conversation ends with you. Of course, you're right. Of course, you got yep. it. I will make adjustments immediately mm -hmm. to, yeah. to change that. Do you remember the toasted bun story? <laughs> Well, we want to hear about this toasted is, buns. So cute. This is this is like something we will talk about. What a what a, what a uh, it, yes. Toasted I mean, we'd buns. hardly been together any length of time. I love to cook. She loves to cook. I think we were married like two months. Leads chef, Literally. sous chef. We love to be in the kitchen. We're kind of foodies, you know. And we had a bunch of friends over, and I love to show off in the kitchen. There it is. I love to, and I want everything to hit the table perfectly, you know. So we're gonna toast. Buns. Oh, it hit the table, all right. <laughs> Oh gosh. Let's and, hear it. And I don't remember the specifics, but I'm 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 I don't multitask very well, so my energy's real scattered, you know, and she's just doing it wrong. <laughs> and I suddenly I was three sentences in before I heard it, but I suddenly started talking to her like uh Gordon like, Ramsay Hell's Kitchen. Like mm -hmm. like Jeez. I mm -hmm. I suddenly was kind of talking down to her. I mean I didn't call her names. But I suddenly was kind of You're like, why are you doing scolding like, her? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I'm about three sentences in, and I see the look on her face, and, and I don't know, but this, you have to laugh or cry. You're like, stop talking. You know what I mean? You're, yeah. you're trying to you kind of catch it like a train, because yeah. suddenly now yeah. you're aware. What the hell? Yeah. Why am I so mean? Am I doing? And I put everything down. I turned off the burners. I said, come with me with the back room, and I said. Well, so just to add fuel to this fire, the guests we had over at the house were his children and their respective spouses and girlfriends and his professional colleagues. So imagine being at a dinner party full of therapists. Well, you're yeah. being spanked by the... And yeah. I'm getting spanked by the head therapist. And you're not acting oh in God. your <laughs> mature self, right? Oh my God. You're like even worse. So that's, he that's dragged me... That's what I think makes you so effective. Keep oh, going. so yeah. he dragged me into the bedroom and he closed the door and he's like... I don't know what that was all about. I have no excuse. I, said I, have, I have no, no excuse. excuse. You didn't deserve that. 
You look like you're in shame. And right I, now. I, I don't, I'm not remembering it. It's just. But you know, but now. You need to be scolded. Yeah. Yeah. But what's really funny about it is that I don't remind him of it, and I'm like, "Do you remember that time? Yeah, you no. blah blah blah." Right. Now it's just kind of it's really a funny story for yeah. us because, uh, a now when we have hamburgers with buns, I don't go near the buns. <laughs> <laughs> and everything works Everybody out just fine. Yeah. Yeah. We all learned. Um, but also, it is such a really good reminder. Um, of two things. Uh, first of all, that there are there are real grievances that we have in marriage because no matter how much he is in love with me, no matter how much I am in love with him, I am a fallen, broken, sinful person. Hmm. Maybe my mommy thinks I'm wonderful, but truthfully, I am flawed uh, ordinarily as every other human on this planet mm -hmm. is with maybe a few exceptions. And so is he in his own unique but very human way. And so everybody's going to really just step in it sometimes. But the other part of it is that because we are both broken and fallen, we, we can each pick the other up mm. out of brokenness. And day by day, piece by piece, burnt bun by burnt <laughs> bun, it just gets a little easier. What's wrong? I think that's hysterical. <laughs> I know, yeah. I, no more buns. There's got to be a strategy and a mechanism for repair hmm. because we're going to speak and behave. I, I've said this to you before. You really do reserve the worst of yourself for the beloved. You do. Hmm. You, you, you find yourself talking to the beloved in ways you would never address a Walgreens clerk, a grocery store clerk, a, a stranger on the street, and you're like, like, God, listen to me. Hmm. Like, how do I dare? Yeah. 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 No, it's absolutely true. No, when you catch it, you just got to own it and repair it. And mm -hmm. Well, I think that makes you so effective because you, when, when we're doing, you know, our sessions with you, you, you bring up, you know, the stupid shit you've done, and it makes us realize, yeah, we're not the only people doing stupid shit. Mm -hmm. But what, I'm so curious, what drew you into this line of work? You're the most effective human we've ever talked to and helping us and your your little tools like your alternative Keith and alternative yeah, Jesse yeah. and 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 your understanding of when she says something I'm like and you you've we've done this depending, I'm like well you guys are both clearly wrong and I'm in the session and I can almost see you just going this motherfucker I know right? <laughs> this motherfucker because I'll say like you guys are wrong you guys are full of shit and this is wrong but you you always handle it with such grace how did you Wait, I want to say one thing to them. Go the ahead. sessions that we're in where you're like this for a long time, yeah. and all of a sudden you, you keep going and you're going, and then you, and then all of a sudden he says something, you're like, and then just even the, your voice is like, you're not wrong. And like, oh my gosh, it just like, like lifts wait. everything. We're like, oh, like, we fucking oh. finally get gold with but this But you're like, I don't see what you're saying. Like, no, I don't think so. You're, you're literally like this, and then you're like... Yeah. Yeah, I'm usually the last of the party, oh. but it's pretty a good idea when I'm I. Like, it's fun yes, when I finally show Here. up. Now we're not going to fight anymore. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Those so, moments. So a couple of sources, I think, explain how I got where I got. I don't, I don't know why, but I, it, it, there's they could explain. Um, I'm convinced that second only to the theater department is the psych department, the nuttiest college on any university campus. Uh, because most psych majors limp there. Most psych majors become psych majors somehow answering the question, what the hell happened to me? Mm. And that was definitely me. Like, the stuff I grew up with was just not okay. And, you know, I, I didn't go crazy. I don't know. I found the right uh, uh, people and hung on, you know. And so now I'm in, I'm in psychology and I'm just fascinated by the question, how do people end up like they end up, right? Mm -hmm. And how did I end up like I ended up and where could you go from here? That was reason number one and you'll hear a lot of therapists talk that way. Um, th that I have a specialty with couples was a little bit of a surprise to me until I remembered I'm a four and one of the nicknames for four on the Enneagram is uh, the tragic romantic. Mm. And, and the truth is, fours think they've been to heaven and seen the golden tablet 
of what great love is. We think we've been there and actually seen it, and then we come back down to earth and don't understand why the rest of you haven't seen it. Mm. Why you're like, come on, everybody. it's possible, it's really possible. Yeah. You know, to have not just a just a be marriage, but it's possible to grow love and intimacy until you die. Yeah. Um, and so, and so, it was, uh, I guess, kind of natural for me to just be fascinated with why do marriages fall apart? Mm. Um, you mentioned, uh, I guess, you could call it a technique, uh, alternative Keith and alternative Jesse. I didn't learn that in school. Uh, it emerged over the years uh, because of my impatience. Uh, because I'm sitting there listening to two people talk, and in my head, I mean, if you could see it naked, mm -hmm. it would be like, Jesse, I don't know how in the hell you expect him to have the slightest idea who you are, what you want, or what you mean with those words in that tone. So in my sure. heart, I'm to, or, and, and, or to Keith, I have no idea who could understand that, right? Yeah. But I think I know what you're trying to say. And so I'm sitting there going, my teacher said I'm supposed to wait eight sessions and have you figure it out for yourself. But you're paying me money and I'm bored. I don't want to wait eight sessions yeah. for them to accidentally figure it out. Yeah. So alternative Keith or alternative Jesse is my way of saying, what if you said it like this? What if alternative Jesse walked in and said, da ba da ba da ba da ba da ba da ba da And not all the time, but most of the time, uh, the Jesse in the story goes, well, that's what I'm trying to say. And I refrain from saying, and you didn't come close to right. saying yeah. that. Right. Yeah. You didn't. In yeah. fact, you said a lot of things yeah. that people were chasing around, and you had no idea. And you too, yeah. and me, Only. and you. Like, we like, all do. Uh, oh so, yeah. So I just feel like I just want to save you eight sessions, and I wanted to say, is is this what you're asking for? Well, yeah. Okay then. I couldn't even pinpoint why I love you so much, but that's exactly why. Because I'm impatient too. Well, both of us, and mm -hmm. you just get right to it. Mm -hmm. Like I don't need all the other BS. I want you to tell me. That's why I'm here. You're not going to work with that. me for very long if you want somebody to take notes and say, mm, because I'm just not that guy. That's yeah. why I didn't like anyone else. <laughs> yeah, because well, we went to a lot of other people and we're like, this is some Hello. this is some horse shit served in a fucking bullshit <laughs> wrapper. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> We're like what's I'm this? Let's yeah, like what's this I bullshit? Figure it out. Yeah. yeah, because we 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 also are geared the same way. We're like, well, why 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 are you acting that way? Like, why do you think that? And the the curiosity of why just burns in us so deeply. And then we would come to you, and we're like, well, we we hate each other right now, and we're both pretty convinced why. Uh, and and like, it's obviously her, <laughs> and and he's she's like, it's, well, it's, it's like never me. You're like ever. it's definitely him. <laughs> And we're like, and but you will get to it, and we're like, oh well, that's you're okay. not wrong. Didn't see that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, glad you're here. It's it's it. Let's keep what, paying, yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's why we are so adamant, even when things are good, because there was a time when we would only show up on your doorstep, and we're like, ah, oh, well, we pretty much hate each other. The last month was pretty great, but now we're pretty much at each other's throats. And then we're like, well, what if we just kept going while it's really good, and we can build on this thing? Yeah. Yep. And that's, that's when we really would start to see some like real headway. And that's when we haven't like slipped all the way down to where it's like, I literally don't think I'm going to be here much longer. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now we just kind of like keep it. We're like, mm, we've, yeah. we've got another nickname for you too. And we call you the referee. Oh, I didn't. Okay. I don't yeah. Know. We're like, and we tell everybody like, you got to go get a referee because you mm -hmm. guys are, you think you're fighting. But you're not getting anywhere, and if the guy could be like, "Hey, no, no hitting below the belt," then you wouldn't be thinking you're scoring all these points. You're actually negatively affecting shit. And I think it's why we're like coaches, so to speak, is like we fully, really, really believe in a coach in like every area of your life, like for fitness, for um, like growing your business, but obviously relationships is like even the coaches have a coach, like. Everyone needs to have a referee. Okay, I got to. have to. I got to ask this question for our daughter then. Okay, so uh, before we were coming over here, I said, hey, listen, um, you know how we coach couples? And she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, well, you, do you know we have a coach? And she goes, oh. I go, well, he's coming into town today. We're going to put him on the podcast. She goes, oh. Well, you always say that everybody should have a coach. And, like I've been indoctrinating her. Like have somebody that can see from the outside in. Such shit you can't see. She goes, well, who's his coach? Ooh. 
So this question is from, from, right? from Jovi Joy Yaki. She wants to know, Wizard, who's your coach? So there are three. Um, my uh, earliest clinical supervisor was a guy named Bill Griffin. I'm, he was. He's still alive. Um, oh, probably, Billy G. Probably retired now. I know. Wild Bill, Wild Bill. And uh, probably the smartest guy I ever knew. And he was the one that taught me a, a model for therapy called constructivism. So that is just a fancy way of helping people ask better questions. Mm. Uh, because the way we construct our worldview sometimes is with the wrong question or bad questions, mm -hmm. right? And so if you ask people new questions, suddenly their worldview expands and they've got more choices. So Bill uh, uh, was my very first supervisor and I still call him once in a while. Then the best, uh, the, in my opinion, the best therapist in Las Vegas, Nancy Hunterton, uh, was a colleague and friend uh, first but always a door I can knock on to say, let me tell you what happened in that session. I want to make sure I'm seeing that right. I want to make sure I'm not missing anything. At this stage in my career, that happens the most often when once a year somebody gets really mad at me and, and I want to, inv not because it's, that's always my problem, right? It's, it's some, some people just need to get mad at me for a while. But I just want to make sure because... I use a lot of irony and sometimes I can misstep and I'll, I'll bet it's insulting. Mm -hmm. And so I'm always a little, yes, <laughs> in my marriage sometimes I can use irony yeah. in a way that becomes something else. Yeah. Uh, so she's cool. But right now, the my number one uh, coach is a Brazilian named Uranio Paes. Um, Uranio's type five, very droll, very deadpan. And uh, he changed my life once when he was talking about how fours grow spiritually. And he said, and I quote, fours have to be happy. And to do that, they, they have to give up their ego investment in being the saddest person in the room. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. And I was like, I'd never thought of it that way. I just thought I was more emotionally sensitive than anybody and that's what made me unique and special and you all just aren't as sensitive as me. It never occurred to me, stop <laughs> laughing so hard. It never occurred to me that that's where ego was for me, that I was the saddest person in the room. Oh shit. And, and you thrived off of it. Oh my God, and yeah. see that's what I want in a supervisor is somebody can, you know, can kind Same. of just, yeah. there it is. Yeah. You know, there's the thing you've been blind to. And it's a little humiliating, but then it's really good. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's your exact, the sting yeah. of embarrassment mm -hmm. is, I now realize it's actually, it's, we call it exposure is the gateway mm -hmm. to expansion. Yes. It's like you get exposure, exactly. like, oh, fuck, mm -hmm. that's actually all my bullshit. And we're like, and guess what? You can start cleaning it up right now. And that means there's a beautiful mm -hmm. future. And you're like, oh. Oh, finally. All right, let me get the trash yeah. bags and the gloves. The minute you can see it, you have choices. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so great. Anything that, else? No, this, that this was is, beautiful. Well, I want to, is so there anything good. else you want to close off and say? Because I want to have you back yeah. another day and talk about, I got some other ideas that we could go, but it would, it, it would be really, this has been so beautiful for me. It's been amazing. It's been so beautiful yeah. for us. I'm so glad we're getting to introduce you guys to the world. And if there's anything you want to say in closing comments, I have some closing comments I'd like to make, but I'd like for you to, if there's anything that you would say maybe to anybody listening that might be struggling with their marriage or what have you, what, what would you like to say, Coach? Marriage is a people-growing machine. And the only people that should ever get married are people who really want to spend the rest of their lives being challenged by their imperfect mate who will regularly see before you see how and why you're full of shit. Hmm. And, 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 and it's, it is, there's a sting of humiliation or embarrassment there's, and there's the temptation to defensiveness. But if you can stay curious and remember why you married this person in the first place, you're listening to your advocate and not your enemy. Mm. Mm. Gosh. 
Well, there you go. Now you see why we call him the wizard. You see why we've been able to grow so much under his tutelage and his care. And uh, we will provide all the contact information if you want to get a hold of him. We, uh, p- the people, get ready to be pe- busy. Yeah, <laughs> people, people come through Married Game all the time, and then they just need that, hey, I'd like for my wife and I to sit down with uh, a coach. We don't really do a lot of couples things. Mm-hmm. We just kind of work with the dude and um, and then sometimes with the lady. But this is our guy, and we have recommended him to some of our very best friends who also now claim him as their guy. And uh, I highly recommend that uh, you go follow them. Uh, is there a way? To, how can they just, we can just put it right here. How can they reach out to you? What's the best way for them to? Call me. 702-845-7993. Okay. Say it again. 702 845 Seven nine nine three. That's my business phone number. Yeah. Ring off the hook. Yeah, I, I, I hope it <laughs> does go. because um, he, he's he's like we. You might think we're joking when we say we would not be together without this man, but that I. Is no joke. I it's not a joke. It's like it's the realest shit ever, and you know we only keep it real here. So uh, we'll also provide that number and all the other ways you can just make sure that you can get a hold of him. Uh, we love this. We don't run ads on this show, so uh, don't be a nerd. Spread the word. If you loved what happened here and you gained something, let us know what it is because we love hearing back from you. And as always, keep crushing it. That shit's contagious.